parked on the side of the road. What I've got is the computer sitting there, which has got the dash, uh, sorry, the terminal running in it. Got some extra debugs and that uh, being shown up the moment, which will come up as I'm driving. Uh, Eon on the dash, GoPro up there, and e-camera looking at the steering wheel. And I've never cleaned this up, I probably never will. There's the installation sitting up above the mirror. That's how all mine's mounted. Now, the main purpose of this video is not to uh, chat about my installation, it's because this is a new version, which I'll show here. There. The UI is still pig slow. 0.5.10 and turn that off because that does not work in Australia. Right, and off we go. So the reason that I'm doing voiceover now is because my GoPro crashes so many times it's not even funny and I just cannot get a video out. So we'll start with a little bit of history. In January I started implementing a bit of code which used to correct lane centering during corners. So if the car was drifting out of the center of the lane during the corner, what I would do is correct its position by adjusting the steering angle. It turned out this was really consistent. So what I started doing was using that as a auto tuning. This had many issues. So if there was wind on the left hand side of the vehicle for example and I was turning to the left, it would tune differently than if I was turning to the right. So what this resulted in was a tune that was never quite right. If there was no wind around and the road was flat, I could go for a drive and get a perfect tune. And it actually did to get perfect tune. And it always tuned my car at 14.7, despite the factory saying it should be 13.76. So at the start of this drive, what I've done is reset it to what the factory says is meant to be 13.76, and a stiffness ratio of 0.6. So the stiffness ratio is a slip factor, you're probably going to hear me interchange these terms. Um, while they're not completely interchangeable, that's what I'm referring to. So... I had proven a theory, but it didn't work reliably. It didn't work reliably enough for me to give it to anyone other than myself to test. And, you know, I've shown data showing that it worked. Anyway, I started talking to Comma, and, or in particular Willem. And they already had something that did this offline. And they had it long before I even started. And they were about to start working on doing it online. And, you know, learning the steer ratio. And I basically said, no, you can do both. At mixed velocities, you can, you know, gather the same data and effectively learn both of them. Now, this guy named Willem, he listened to me, said that he wasn't sure that he could do it, and come back to me in a matter of a day or two and said, it's done. Uh, and that he was testing it internally. And now I've finally got a chance to try it along with everyone else. He did do it and it doesn't have any of the issues, or at least I haven't seen it, have any of the issues that I had with my tuning at this stage. So, massive props to Willem. And what does this mean for Hyundai Kia Genesis port specifically? We already don't need to tune KIF. Now we don't need to tune steer ratio or the slip factor, which means that you now literally have a auto tuning port. You plug in your car, we already don't need fingerprints. If you don't have a car with the correct fingerprint, what it does is it uses a default configuration, which is, you know, roughly the median of what all the different cars are. So it uses this default to start with. We know our KFs are the same for all of them because we've all got the same Mobus power steerings. They react the same way, regardless whether it's ruck or column mount. And the... Uh, sorry, the car parameters being, you know, the steer ratio and slip factor, which do change, but depending on tyre pressures, the weight of the vehicle, uh, whether you're towing or not, these all change how much the steer ratio and, or the steering angle needs to change relative to velocity, which is what the slip factor or the tyre stiffness does. And because that auto tunes, that means you might start with a slightly imperfect car, like in the way that it steers. But it won't take long as in maybe an hour of driving and you're going to have it driving perfectly. So it means 
a lot for the Hyundai and Kia branch. Now this was actually the second time the Hero 7 crashed. The first time was only about 30 seconds after I took off. It crashed and I noticed it as I went around the corner that the red light was solid instead of flashing. So I pulled over and started again. So this is crash too. It's very, very hard for me to recommend the GoPro Hero 7 because I've had older GoPros and never ever had this issue. Whereas this one, and it doesn't just seem to be me, it seems to be a very common issue. So there's a few other issues. One, it works okay if you don't have a microphone or charger plugged into it. You can get quite a while, you can get you know 45 minutes sometimes of recording before it crashes. If you plug in a microphone, it will now randomly crash somewhere between that 45 minute mark and straight away. If you charge it and have a microphone plugged in, or just charge it while it's recording, it will crash within 10 minutes, almost guaranteed. If you're recording only 1080p, 25, 30 frames, it will actually record almost indefinitely, as long as there's no microphone plugged in and no charger plugged in. So this one here, originally I was going to, hence the comment, was actually going to show you it, um, the voice on it, but it decided not to record. So you see I corrected just there. What that effectively is, is my steer ratio is correct, but the slip factor or the tire stiffness is not yet quite correct. So it didn't quite get the angle correct as it went around that corner. That corner is actually a really good test for me to make sure it's correct. And basically what, I, what I've got spitting out uh, is what it's effectively doing on my terminal. And I've seen that it's not quite there yet. It had about 0.8 as the uh, steer stiffness, tire stiffness, which is wrong. So it's gonna slowly get it correct. So that's the reason that it turned a little bit too sharp. Now, here we're coming to a stop. This is just worth pointing out again. You can see that I've had to use the brake to bring it to a stop and it's still steering. You see how it's wiggling a little bit as it comes to a stop? That is not necessarily a bad tune. Uh, obviously a better tune can help with that, but what that is, because we're torque based steering, as you get lower, the delays get greater. This is where the next little thing is inside this new version. We're now using the Smart Park Assist message at lower speeds. It is disabled and it's disabled in this version that I'm showing here. But when you use the Smart Park Assist message below 10 kilometers an hour, which is what we can do with an unmodified car, that's gone. Because the issue isn't with uh, MPC, the issue isn't with Open Pilot in that case, unless it's you know losing one of the dashed lines. What it actually is, is the torque based steering is just really hard to get right at lower speeds. That particular corner, we've got enough torque to get around it. My understanding is so do Toyota, GM, Tesla and pretty much every other car. Unfortunately, Vision is really optimised for Honda. So we really need uh, Comma to stop optimising things for Hondas because Hondas are holding everyone else back. Because, yeah, that corner really shouldn't be a problem. So, now this is a little call out to Comma. Please improve vision. Wiggly was good. So, auto lane change is also in here. Now, you're going to see a false alarm come up. So, you can see the auto lane change did okay. That particular fault is because the PID was winding up, or the integral was winding up, or and so was probably the error. The proportional was getting greater as it was taken over from what it was being uh, expecting it to do. So it's basically a garbage alert, ignore it. So you can see that we're changing lanes okay. Make sure you get it set on Wi-Fi, not on any of the more aggressive ones if you give it a try and tune it. I'm not going to help you turn auto lane change on because it's not tuned properly. When somebody or myself tune it, then we'll give it to everyone. But until then, I'm leaving it disabled. And all you've got to do is go into a file uh, you should be able to find it and then make one little tiny change on one line and auto lane change will work for you. Why have I left it like this? Because it's not safe but I also want it there and very easy for people to turn on and uh, give it a try. The reason that I have not uh, made it a little bit easier is because if you don't know how to edit that file you really shouldn't be using it. Now, 
yeah there's another comment because like i said originally i wasn't going to do this voiceover but it was it was so bad um anyway where was i oh yes auto lane change that yeah that's in there as well smart park assist is in there smart park assist is also disabled in code you need to find the spot in some file somewhere i've got it inhibited in one spot all you need to do is just enable it and it will work as long as your car does not already have smart parking assist if it does then obviously you can't use this feature now as for getting this to work and how good is smart park assist message it's incredible it is absolutely incredible uh, I've timed 110 degrees movement on the steering wheel as being 0.2 seconds delay and it was 0.14 seconds from when I sent the message until it started to move and then it was 0.2 seconds from when it started to move until it had stabilized at the angle that I told it to and this was while in park so that gives you an idea of the amount of torque that it has and the speed that it can react in the port at the moment it's got a lot of dampening around it, there's a lot of slowdown so it's only turning, I can't remember what, what speed it is but it's slow it's, it's gee what is it uh, it doesn't matter, it's really slow, it's even slower than what the, uh, lane keep can turn the steering wheel for safety, I've basically set it as what, you know, the fastest you should ever need to turn the steering wheel when you're driving down the road, so it's not going to fly, now from a safety point of view obviously with that much torque that could be pretty scary Hyundai, or I should say Mobis, have put some safety built into their system where if I touch the steering wheel and give it any amount of torque, and it's probably a little bit more than what Teslas are to override, uh, if anyone's driven a Tesla, uh, where you fight it, you fight it, and then all of a sudden it just clunks, completely disengages. That's actually the MDPS faults and gives me a fault message to say that the driver overrode it. And that's that's its safety built into the power steering so if my safety is bad in the code or something goes wrong in the code it's always very safe for the driver to override and I need to reset that fault before it can steer again resetting the faults actually quite easy and can be done while we're driving down the road as well which is really good news uh, from trying to use it down the road the intention is that what we need to do is in uh, we need to proxy the power steering. TK211X has a column mount power steering. I have a rack mount. I need to get my car up on the hoist, chop some wires, run the power steering message up to the existing panda because we only use lane keep and the car can. We don't use the third one. There's no point. The radar comes from the camera. There's no point even listening to it. So we don't use that third CAN bus on panda. So I'm going to use that for sending the correct messages to the power steering to basically say we're, we're not moving or we're only moving at 3 or 4 kilometers an hour. And that will allow it to use the lane keep assist message, uh, sorry, the smart park assist message at all speeds. And that's going to be really, really exciting and probably scary the first few times we do it. I plan to put some extra smarts around the steering so that in the case of it drifting out of lane or nudging, you can put a little bit of torque on the steering wheel and have it correct the angle post MPC a little bit to help you nudge it back into lane. And that should help make it more usable. And also, I'll disengage it in code exactly like Tesla do. We'll disengage on you inputting in uh, a serious amount of torque onto the steering wheel rather than let the power steering actually fault. And in the case of power steering fault, I will probably not let that reset until you come to a stop. And that's simply from a safety point of view. If something's gone wrong with the code and you've had to override it, you really don't want it randomly kicking back in while you're driving because it, you know, we automatically reset. So this is the GoPro crashing again. Uh, it's really worth people seeing how bad these GoPros are. It's, it's disappointing. So I'm going to end this video with a time lapse. This was a tri quick trip from uh, it was where was it Rainbow? I think it was Rainbow to Warwick Nabeel, country Victoria, um, going north, so getting into the more deserty part of the town, uh, the country. Now this was running on 0.5.9, so the older version, and I had to save it a few times. So there was as we went past the tractor, I had to grab it, and you'll see occasionally it you know starts drifting over the line where I had to save it on roads like this it drives reasonably well 
but it does have issues. The issues come in, it occasionally grabs the wrong areas, like on this road here, it occasionally think that the line or the edge of the road, it won't know which is correct. Where there's shadows, because the how dark the lines are, where the tires are running, occasionally it'll grab it wrong. And there's also a corner where it it didn't quite steer in time and it grabbed the lane on the other side, which oh, I don't know where it was. You'll probably see it when it comes along. There, you see how it was out of the lanes a little bit. I had to help it. It didn't quite get through there. So 0.5.9, you can see how it's very slow wobble left and right, but you can't see when you're driving. You can only see this in a time lapse. Those little tiny wobbles, because they're so slow, you got to realize this is 10 times your speed. You really don't notice them, and what they generally are is the environment. So that's, you know, the, the road's a little different, or there's a bit of wind coming along, and it just offsets a bit. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe, share this with your friends, and I'll see you around.